Hey woodworkers, I've had this Rikon 210H 12 inch helical joint planer for a few weeks now and I thought I'd take the time to show you guys what I think about it. So I'm going to be talking about its setup and tuning, features, fit and finish, performance, and also at the very end of the video I have a slow pan scan over the cutter head and rollers so you can see more of the inside of the machine. And because there isn't a lot of content online about this unit, Feel free to post questions in the comments down below and I will answer them as best as I can. So first let's talk about the machine's features. Its most interesting feature are the heel cutter heads. It has 56 total cutters in four rows of 14. Otherwise it's a 240 volt unit with a three horsepower motor. The jointer table is 55 and one half inches long. The planer table is 21 and a half inches long with the outfeed rollers adding on 14 more inches. As you can see, it has a European style blade guard and it has an end mounted fence. Otherwise, the features are very vanilla for this kind of jointed planer. The dust shroud flips from one side to the other. The planer controls are over here with the roller control being this lever. And as you can see, it has a lever style jointer infeed control, not the two thumb wheels. Machine setup. First off, getting the machine to my house was really easy. The unit ships directly from Rikon, and for me, they use RL carriers. They were very accommodating because I needed a smaller panel type van to get down into my alley, into my garage. Um, they did that with no, no problems, no questions asked, no additional fees, so kudos to them. Otherwise, setting up the machine was really easy. Um, with this kind of unit, there aren't a lot of parts to put together. Basically, you just need to add on the fence and maybe the guard. That was about it. Um, tuning, all I had to do was to square up the fence to the table, and I also needed to simply calibrate the planar depth gauge. Um, that was it. So checking everything that's come out of the box, um, I didn't need to adjust the in-feed out-feed tables at the highest jointer height. They're the same. Um, I have noticed a little bit of um, anti-coplanarity between the two. Um, there's about a five thousandths of an inch difference in terms of tilt. Um, I'm not confident enough to fix that quite yet, so I'm going to leave it. it. Hasn't proven to be a big deal. In addition, I got the $100 mobility kit. I like the way it looked, and with the unit weighing 500 pounds, it seemed like this would be the best way to go as opposed to a $60 um, generic mobility kit. So far, I like it. Now we can talk about the unit's fit and finish. Overall, I will give this a B. There were only three things that I wasn't fully happy with. The first is the roundness of the desk port. It really isn't totally round. So initially I tried one of those plastic quick disconnect fittings for my dust hose. And because it's not round, it wouldn't make a good seal. So I wound up having to use one of those rubber adapters to make it work. You know, that added on another eight bucks to the dust collection. So that wasn't great. Uh, secondly, you hear, you'll hear this later on in the video when I'm operating the planer table. The main shaft for the planer table, it just rubs a little bit against its housing so it squeaks. Um, I had re-spread some of the, the grease around there up and down the shaft just to make it not squeak, but it came back, so apparently I need to re-lubricate that. Um, that's probably something that should have been perfectly done from the factory. And thirdly, the table alignment. It's really good for something coming, you know, from overseas. Um, the tables are at the highest lever position. They're very, very level. Um, I couldn't fit a two and a half thousandths field of gauge underneath my straight edge anywhere across the whole table. So that was pretty good. Um, my only complaint is that the two tables are slightly out of parallel by, I think, five thousandths from the front to back. Um, someday I'll tune that up, but it's fine for now. So now I'm going to talk about the quality of each part of the machine, basically what the interaction is with the user, and how that experience adds up to the machine's total performance. 
So let's start with the table surfaces. As you guys might know, this unit does not have a polished table surface. Instead, it has this very, very, very finely textured pattern to it. I'm not even sure how it's how it's applied. It's sort of a brushed effect. Uh, the easiest way to describe it, I think, is through sound. So if I take this board and run along there, it sounds like corduroy. There it is. It really doesn't affect how the wood slides all that much. It glides a little bit. This is a, a plain piece of stock. So it's fine. I imagine that this was cheaper to produce versus a polished piece of cast iron, but it's just not quite as good. I took this same piece of wood and I ran it across this surface as well as my polished bandsaw table and the, it was easier to move the wood on the polished surface. So I give Rikon a C for this table surface. I would like to see it be polished. Next, we can talk about the cutter head. So far, I've been very, very impressed with the quality that comes off of this thing. I'm going to try to show you the surface by rotating this piece of plain wood around. And if you look very, very closely, you might be able to see a very slight stippling effect. There's, there we go. So in this, in this piece right here, you can basically see the marks left by the cutter head. And I believe this was one of the, the first test pieces that I did. So I really didn't know what I was doing at the time. Um, but throughout the rest of the board, you can see how nice it looks. So just a, a tiny bit of sanding and this thing will be ready to go. So the cutter head does a wonderful job, um, A plus on it. It's, it's a great product. So next we can talk about the cutter guard. I don't have a lot to say about this. This seems to be a pretty standard issue product. It's all, this part's aluminum, this part's steel. Those are the titans. The unit moves up and down with this kind of stiff knob over here. Yeah, it works. And then finally you can move it out of the way with this cam lever. So not much to say on the blade guard. It works. Here are the two fixed wheels that you get with the mobility kit. Basically the axle inserts through the side of the cabinet, it gets bolted on, and then the wheels just slip onto the axle. Another side there is a pickup point for this T-bar here. And here's a clip of me moving the machine around. It works just fine. Um, it feels very sturdy and it's nice being able to pull the machine around with a T-handle um, that's up by your, your belly as opposed to grabbing onto the, the tables. A pretty good idea, I think, for moving the machine around because you with a jointer like this, you really shouldn't be yanking on the tables. Um, there's That's sort of the precision part of the machine. So I think the mobility kit is a good buy. All right, let's talk about the fence. The fence is probably the worst part about this entire machine. It's a piece of stamped steel with a extruded aluminum attached to it, and it rests on these two mill bosses. So I had it taken off just to show you that, you know, at least these two are a good reference point, um, but there's not a lot of meat for it to ride on. So putting it back on, that sound like that. And you get these two oversized washers. They slip down like that. And then you have some ratcheting levers that thread on top. So unlike other fence designs, um, this one has a 45 tilt that only goes in one direction. So currently it's set for zero. You unlock it with this, and it moves around. So it's actually it's fairly accurate once you get it tuned up. Um, there are adjustment points for both in the ninety position and for here we go, and for forty five. So it's it's reasonably accurate, um, but just the the heft and how it feels in your hand just doesn't instill a lot of confidence in it, if you know what I mean. And also loosening it 
And then moved it around. Yeah. Just doesn't sound that good, you know? And then if you have the fence all the way out this way. Right. These okay, here's another thing. Watch watch me fumble. This is a good lesson. <laughs> not how not to build a tool. So once you get these locked in with the fence towards the wall, um, you can't you can't bring it to 45 anymore. So normally this the these runners here would meet these stops for 45, but it, it hits the ratchet handle. So the fence is kind of tacked on. Um, there's some English over here. It's called instructions of fence. And there's some diagrams. So this is functional. Um, I've jointed perfectly straight corners with it. Um, they're just fine. So in use, it works fine as a fence. It's, but it's build quality it doesn't live up to the ex expectations set by the rest of the machine. Now let's talk about the infeed tables lever control. So here I have it set at what is zero. And as you can see, it's really not zero. Um, if I raise it all the way up past z the zero mark, yeah, it, it'll pass. Um, but I'm not really sure what this sticker is trying to tell me. Uh, from my experience so far, I really haven't used these numbers as any kind of meaningful thing. Um, basically, I just find a good position that gives a nice small controllable cut and I stick with it. Um, this is this is kind of useless. And I checked the manual and there isn't a way to tune this up to make it match reality. So mm, there it is. So one legitimate concern with jointer planar machines is the amount of time it takes to switch from one mode to the other. So let's time this Rikon. So I'm going to switch it from jointer to planar, planar to jointer, including my clumsy dust collection hose. So here goes. Cleaning is not complete until we move the table to a useful level. I'm going to shoot for one inch, starting at six and a half. There we go. That's a planer. All right, back to jointing. We see this thing in action. So I have a piece of two by eight, nice cup to it. It's old, old lumber I had in my garage. So we're gonna flatten this thing up to three sides. So here we go.
So while I was switching the machine over to playing that board, I thought I'd t show you the dust that's left over on the planer table after the those couple of passes. So this is pretty common to these kinds of machines. The chip and dust collection isn't perfect. So that was what, two faces of a board and there's you know quite a bit of crap on here. So you'll wind up just brushing this off every single time you use it. machine's value. I think I got a pretty decent value for my money. Um, so I was in the market for a 12 inch combination machine with helical powder head. That was the segment I was going after. So in that range, we have the Grizzly unit coming in at 2600, the Rycon at 28, both the Jet and the Laguna model are at 3300, the Mini Max and the Felder are somewhere above there, basically out of my price range. So what made me pick the Rycon is that, well, first off, the Rycon and the Jet are the same machine. Um, same cutter head, same rollers, same everything. The only th difference that I could see was that the feed rate is slightly different for the Jet. That was it. Um, so then between that machine and the Grizzly, basically you get a lot more cutter heads for only $500 more. Um, the Grizzly has 32 inserts, whereas the Jet and Rycon have 56 inserts. Uh, quite a big difference for me. I assume that I'll get a better cut from the more cutter heads. And also, what set this machine apart from the Jet is that it has an outfeed table for the planer. Um, only the, I think the Minimax has an optional outfeed table. No one else offers that. And so for a relatively short planer table, only 21 inches, I thought it was a really great inexpensive addition to add on a simple set of rollers. So that's what made me go with the, with the Rikon. Uh, sort of middle of the ground, less than $3,000, and it's a pretty good quality. Um, there's a few nagging things, you know, the roundness of, of the dust port, the kind of tinsy fence and the table surface, but honestly, none of those things are preventing me from getting a good cut and a good finish. So moving forward, um, if I do have problems with the machine, I will be sure to make an update video or add comments to this one, just to keep you guys informed. And as always, uh, hit me up with questions about it. I'd be happy to answer them. Thanks for watching. Here's some shaky cam footage of the insides of the machine. This is probably the most interesting thing of all, so I'll just spend some time in each bit. 